Well, I've had it with the squirrels. I mean, they are eating all my peaches. They're after my tomatoes now. I haven't got a single ripe tomato out of the garden because they're getting every one of them. Worst part about it is they're not even eating the whole tomato. They're just chewing about half of it off and then leaving it there and coming back for another one. I've said this before. I don't mind sharing with the squirrels, but the squirrels don't share with me. So today, I'm building a squirrel trap. I'm going to take you guys along with me. All right, so I'm going to be building this out of welded wire. This is cage wire. It's 36 or 30 inch, 30 inch by 10 foot long. I'm not sure this is going to be enough wire to get it completely done. I've got a little bit of spare wire in there. Um, I probably could have got away with 24 inch, got it a little cheaper. This was like $18, $19 for this roll of wire. Um, but they didn't have any. All they had was a 30 inch wire. So this is what I'm using. And all they had was 30 inch. This is half inch by half inch or half inch by one inch. And I probably could have got away with one inch by two inch, but again, they didn't have any. So this is what I'm using. I actually, uh, this is not my own design. I've seen this design before, but uh, they actually sell one commercially pre-made, but they want like $60 for it. So uh, I thought, you know what? I can build that and I can build it cheaper. So that's what I'm gonna do. And I think theirs is actually two foot by two foot. This is gonna be two foot by 30 inches. So uh, first thing I gotta do is get this all undone. Put my trash over there where it doesn't blow away. Find the wire. Let me get this all strung out. And uh, what, I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do first is uh, roll it out, measure off. Um, I'm gonna do two feet, or yeah, two feet, 24 inches. So 24 inches for the top, 24 inches for the bottom, four inch tall walls. So I'm gonna cut a piece that is, let's see, what is that, eight, or 24, 24, that's four feet, 16 inches, four feet, 16 inches. So that's the first thing I'm gonna do, but I gotta get this uh, piece of wire off here, which is always tricky to do. <clears throat> Maybe, come on, get out of there. Oh, good grief. Now, this is the part you always worry about the thing just going, Boom, and spring it open. <laughs> Usually doesn't quite do it that bad, but still, you always worry about it. There we go. Now we're making it. I said that. There, finally. Good grief, that was harder than it should have been. All right, so I'm gonna put some gloves on so I don't cut myself up, because this wire is sharp. You don't need to watch me roll it out and measure it. I'm just gonna roll it out and measure it off at, what did I say, eight feet? No, four feet, 16 inches, and then, uh, then I'm gonna cut it. So I'll come back when that's done and show you the next step. All right, so I've got my wire all cut here. It's kind of silly as I was going through this. I remember telling you guys I needed to cut it at, what did I say, four foot, 16 inches? Well, that's five foot, four inches. I could have done it that way. But either way, we got it cut. So now I need to, uh, I'm going to bend the wire for the sides of the cage. So it's going to be four inches in on each side. The sides are going to be four inches tall. So let me measure out my four inches. And it's right, right there on that one. And then I'm going to use this two by four to make myself a nice crease in it. So just line it up right on that line. There we go. One side done, now I gotta do the other. All right, well, I messed this up, so don't pay attention to what I told you earlier about the measurements I was cutting at, because I did it wrong. So why I really should draw my plans out instead of just thinking them up in my head and trying to work out that way. Doesn't always work very well. All right, so what I told you earlier was I needed to go 
uh, 16 inches further than four feet. Four feet because it's gonna be two feet wide and I need a top and a bottom and then two four inch walls. Well, that's four foot eight inches, not four foot 16 inches or five foot four, however you wanna say it. So I messed it up. The other thing I did wrong was I built, the, built this wall in over here and then I realized the wall's not gonna go here. It's gonna go in the middle here. It's gonna go 24 inches from the side. So uh, I need to go ahead and it's okay. I, at least I cut too much wire and I didn't cut it too short or anything like that. And I'll be able to use that wire I have to cut off. So not that big of a deal. I need to measure out 24 inches. Ugh. Find 24. Ugh. And 24 inches is right there. That's 24 inches. So let's see if I can get my, uh, get my tape measure out of there. tell you there's always a hundred things that go wrong every time I try to do a project this is one of them oh well we'll take care of that here in a minute all right so now same process I'm gonna bend up this side here to make my wall to make my wall on the side of the cage and I could have cut these and then just mounted it back together but that's a lot of cutting and a lot of mounting max gather buddy So, let's see how this works with a tape measure sticking on there. Maybe I can get it out of here now. There, good grief, that was hard. All right. Careful I'm not cut myself up while I do this. There. Now we got that one built. Well, I wiped some sweat out of my eyes here. Now Four inches longer. And I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna do this one the other way. So I'll turn around here. Well, let's find out. Anyway, need to measure four inches. Now nah, I'll just do it this way. So again, this is gonna be the up and down side wall. It'll make more sense here in a minute. So I'm gonna go four inches in from here. Four inches is right there. Smart. Didn't get my tape measure stuck this time. Let's see if I can bend this and smack it into place. I'm not sure I can. Uh, I can probably do it. That's trickier than I thought it was gonna be. Got a better idea. I'm gonna bend this out of the way. All right, get this all lined back up. somewhere uh, 
I gotta do this right handed. Can't do it left handed. There we go. Shouldn't need to bend any more wires, so get rid of that two by four. Okay, now I gotta figure out where to cut this thing off because again, I did it wrong. So it's gonna be 24 inches, which is gonna be, let me get my cutters over here so I don't have to dig them out after I measure. 24 inches from right there. And it's gonna be right there on that one. There we go. All right. Let me cut this off. Okay, there we go. Now we got our basic box. Doesn't look like much yet, but it'll get there when we're done. So we're gonna clip all that together. But before I do that, I need to do some uh, measuring here. So where my walls are going to go. I'm going to get a leave a four inch gap in each side. That's where the squirrels will be able to enter. And again, that'll make more sense here in just a second. So I need a couple of uh, walls that go this way. See, I got 24 inches there to play with. So take four inches off. So there'll be two 10 inch walls. So that's pretty easy. Um, these should be should be 10 inches. That should be two 10 inch 10 inch long, four foot or four inch high. Let's see how tall are we here. That's four inches. How tall is that? And four inches. So, oh wait, that won't work, will it? No, it's not going to work. This is going to be some scrap wire right here. Okay. Well, let me cut myself a wall out of here. So that is a four inch wall. Measure it, make sure I didn't cut the wrong side or something crazy. Nope, that's four inches. Needs to be 10 inches long. Oh, that's right there. I don't need to stick this on there anymore. I know where I'm cutting. So that's one wall that's going to go right there. I need another one for this side. I'll see if I can just measure it up off of here. Yep, that will work. I should have done it the other side. But too late now, I already started cutting. I'll show you why I should have done it the other side here in a second. I make these kind of silly mistakes all the time. I'm getting in a hurry. And don't think things through real well. I know I can't be the only one. So now I got these pieces here I gotta cut off. If I'd have done the other side, <laughs> I wouldn't have had that. I don't think that's gonna, now that won't work for that. I'll use that for something else here in a minute. All right, so let me go cut these off. I'm gonna go do this over the trash can so I don't throw little metal pieces all over the yard. All right, I got my walls built for this side. So again, they're gonna go right here. So I think what I'm gonna do is clip the walls in first and then I'll come back and clip the top on. And I'm just using J-clips. Um, if you're not familiar with J-clips, I don't know if you've seen my cage building videos or anything. Basically the same thing I put cages together with. Let me think about this before I do this though. I think what I'm gonna do first is go ahead and cut out the rest of my pieces, just get all my cutting done. So I need two more of these that are 10 inches long for the other side. And then there's gonna be pieces that go down the side here that make like a tunnel for them to, to follow in. And those are gonna be, I think I'll go, We'll see how wide is this, 30 inches? So if I go 10 inches, 10 inches, yeah, I'll just make one, two, three, four, five, six more 10 inch pieces. So, you know, there'll be two on the side here, two that go this way to make the tunnel for them to go down. 
and uh, that should be most of my other cutting. I am also going to need a door, a door on these, which I'll get to here in just a minute, but I'm going to go ahead and cut the rest of these 10 inch pieces off and uh, get them done. I need, what did I say, two, four, six more. So let me go get those cut and I'll come back. All right, so I got my uh, cage wire or all cut. So now it's time to start clipping these things together. I need some new J-clip pliers, but these will work for today. All right, so let's see, where do I want to start? I think what I'll do is clip on this bottom piece first, right there. Make sure that's good and flat and not too bent. Yeah, I think that's what I'll do. So what I'll do is I'll just clip this on right here. I think this will make it easier to work with. I get the first one on, get going, and then it'll be much easier from there on out. Actually, yeah, that's the way I want to do it. There's one clip. Now we're making some progress. I better do it like that so I don't get it stuck on the other side. Now I think I'll do the other side. What's going on here? Did I miss it? Yep, I messed that one up. Try this again. It's going to go right there. That's a tight fit, that's why. So that's pretty much on there. I think I might put one more on there just for safe measure. Let's go right there. Okay. So that's pretty much on there. So yeah, let's just leave this like that. So now the walls that are going to go in here are going to go right there. So that's going to it's going to mount kind of like that when I get all done. Hopefully that kind of makes sense. You'll you'll see it here in just a few minutes. So. Is that on there? Yeah, that's on there. That's good enough. All right, so now I've got the wall on there. Now we'll see how it's going to work. So this is going to sit like that. This wall here is going to bend up in place. And then I'll clamp these two things together. In fact, I might just do that here real quick. So then what I got to do next, and you don't need to watch this because it's the same process, I'm going to put another wall right here, and then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Two walls on the sides, two down the middle. Let me get all that done, then I'll come back and uh, we'll show you what we're going to do next. We're almost done. This is whew, too hot of a day to be working out here like this, but ah, it's better than trying to be cooped up and not have room to work. So let me get this stuff done, I'll come back and we'll show you the next step. 
Okay, I got all the walls in. Now it's time to clamp this thing together. But before I do that, let's see if I can open it up, kind of show you how this is going to work. So, of course, that'll set flat. So, I've got these walls here, here. There'll be a wall down the side. Same thing on the other side. I don't know if you can tell. And let me turn it this way so you may be able to see that a little bit better. So, that's kind of how it's going to work. There's a tunnel right here they're going to walk through. There'll be a trap door here that, that lets them in and then closes behind them. So, when I get it all put together and get that door built, then. Um, you know, I'll show you kind of how that works, but uh, at this point it's just a matter of clipping the thing together, which should not be theoretically too hard, but I got the camera rolling, so I'll probably mess it up. It actually went pretty smooth when I had the camera off, getting the rest of that stuff on there went a lot quicker, but it seems like whenever the camera's rolling is when I'm always going to make my mistakes. That's okay. Everybody makes mistakes. Yeah, look at that. That one went right on. This doesn't want to line up exactly. Why is that? Put some gloves on before I start doing this. I'm going to cut myself up if I don't. I think I maybe just measured just a little off. Yeah, that's okay. We'll just force it on there. Pliers. I tried to avoid a. Uh, Cutting a bunch of wire probably would have been a lot neater had I cut the top out, cut the bottom out, cut the walls out, you know, J-clipped them all together, but I didn't want to do all that, so that's why I just did it all in one piece. It'll work. It may not look the prettiest, but it's a squirrel trap. It's not a not a decoration for the house. So can't grab those with my gloves on. Theoretically, got the corners done right here, right here, right there. I don't have this stone over here done yet, but I'll get on that in a, so in a minute. So theoretically, the rest of this should go pretty easy. We'll find out. Actually, let's set it down flat. Yeah, I think it's going to go pretty easy. It looks like it. think I should probably clamp it down to here too. A couple of clamps anyway to hold that in place. Make it a little bit sturdier. There we go. 
Maybe we should do the same thing with the other one. All right, now we are pretty much done. The only thing that's left to do is put some drap doors in there. I gotta think about this for a second here. All right, I fidgeted around with the door a little bit. I think I got an idea that's gonna work. I think this is gonna work out pretty well. So uh, basically I just cut it at, uh, I guess it's three and a half inches. So it has room to, to fit in here and move around. And then uh, I put a little bend at the end so it sits a little steeper. So if I put it in here like this, I cut it to six inches long. And if I put it in here like this, it seems a little bit on the shallow side. I'm afraid they might be able to get their paws underneath there, or pick it up or something, I don't know. A little too, too angled that way. So I put a little bend in the end and that also helps keep it from getting caught up on the cage floor. So basically all I did is I just set it over here. I'm gonna do it this way. I wanna tie the other part to the ceiling. And then just, uh, just bend it a little bit, just like that. So that works. And then, uh, let me turn this cage around. And then we'll just clip it into place. Let me... And I'm going in about, let's see, two, three squares. So that's an inch and a half. Now I'll just go in, yeah, right there, right there. Three squares. Now I wanna make sure that I get this in the right place so it doesn't uh, slide from side to side too much, get hung up on the side walls, because I don't want it to stick open when it does, of course. But then, kind of crooked, huh? I think I should put one more J-clip in it just to hold it a little straighter. There we go. So here's the idea. See how this is showing up on camera, hopefully. The squirrels can go through here, but then the, uh, oh, look at that. The door's catching. I may have to fidget with this a little to get it to come back down, but actually, it's only, it's only doing that when I hold it up in the air. But anyway, you get the idea. So they go through here, trap door closes behind them, they can't get back out. That's the idea. All right, so the only thing left to do at this point is to uh, cut a, a door in the top here so I'll have access to it. And I think I'm gonna do that probably, I don't know, right here maybe. Don't wanna do it there, don't wanna do it there. Yeah, probably right there. Yeah, that looks good, maybe. One on that side, and then I'll cut here. And then here. Let me get it cut out real quick, and then we'll come back. All right, that should be plenty good enough for me to get them out of there. I just need to cut a piece a little bit bigger than this to go over that, and I'll just J-clip it in place and wire it down. Just flatten that out a little bit. And then that just gets J-clipped on. Make a hinge for it. Is that good? Where are we at here? Yeah, that'll work. All right, so now, now I can open it up and close it. I'm just gonna use this wire that came with it to wire it shut for now, so I don't have to worry about them getting out of there. So we'll just... All right, door is wired shut. Now, one other thing you might wanna do is build some, uh, some kind of door over here that you could close over this section right here. Because if you go to, uh, you know, you get squirrels in here, you go to picking this up, you lift up like that, that door's gonna fall open. You don't want a squirrel jumping out the top of it. I'm off camera, right? You know, whenever you, you pick it up like that. So that's, you know, that's totally your, your option if you wanna do that. I'm honestly not gonna mess with it right now. I'm gonna go set this thing, see if I can catch some squirrels by morning. I think I'm gonna use some, uh, I don't know, just some bread with some peanut butter on it. Probably put it right down there in the middle of the cage. And then we'll see, uh, 
We'll see if we get any squirrels. I'll bring you back and uh, tell you how well it's working. Well, it worked. I watched this trap. I had three or four squirrels coming around all on top of it, trying to figure out how to get inside. This one right here, you probably can't see him, but I'll bring you up close. Finally, finally found his way to the door and squirmed himself inside. It's our tenacity that does them in sometimes, but it is working. Um, I could probably leave it here and maybe catch one or two more, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to take care of it. Let me bring you up close. We'll show you the squirrel. There, I don't know if you can see that guy in there. There he is. He found his way in, got to the peanut butter and the bread, but he cannot find his way out. Now, I'm sure if I left him there long enough, he might figure it out. Like I said, squirrels are tenacious, but right now he's stuck. He's got no way of getting out. And again, I'm sure if I left it there long enough, we'd probably catch one or two more. Who knows? I got, had three or four coming around the trap and looking at it. So, But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to take care of him. You know, so like I said, three or four more coming around, checking out this trap this evening. Now, I, I put it out last night. It was getting dark. I was a little disappointed when I got home and I saw that there wasn't one in there. But as soon as the evening started coming around, the, the squirrels came out and they immediately found this trap with that piece of bread and peanut butter on there. Worked their way around it for a long time trying to figure out how to get in until one of them finally did. He was all by himself when he did it. So uh, I'm not so sure the others have figured it out or not. I'm going to take care of this squirrel and I'm going to reset this trap, see how many more I can catch. So anyway, that's pretty much it for this video. I'm not going to show you continuous catching squirrels. I'm just going to thin them out a little bit because we live in town. That is way too many squirrels for this little section of woods back here. And that's why they're eating tomatoes and my peach trees and all my fruit trees. They're eating all the fruit and all the stuff out of my vegetable garden because there's not, not enough food for them. They're overcrowded. They need to be thinned out a little bit. They don't have any natural predators here. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to thin them out. Hopefully uh, we get a decent harvest out of the garden. They don't get all of it. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. As always... God bless.